I want to open this video by asking you a question, because when it comes to the life of the heart, this is a major subject that we need to address and we need to get honest about. And that is, are you aware of the spiritual battles that come against you in your life? Or do you just kind of go about everyday life and don't take any reference or any sense of recollection or reminder that there's a battle facing you? You see, as believers, there's an invisible war that comes up against you to resist you, to limit you, to push you back, to keep you from the potential that is on the inside of you. And one of the key aspects that is used is the subject, the area of fear. And what I want to bring to your attention is not only does fear create a lot of blocks in your life, it can become a big motivator. In fact, if many of us are honest, we'd realize there's a lot of things that we do based on fear. So that we're like Adam when he was in the garden says, I'm afraid. And there's many things that we don't do simply because fear has become a dominant motivator in our life. Now, this video is really only for those of you who are willing to be honest with yourself and honest with your motives. Jesus said in the last days, men's hearts are going to fail them because of fear. Now, just think of the ramifications of that. Think of the spiritual, emotional ramifications of that, that your, the, the life of your heart failing and just struggling, being limited simply because of fear. You look around and you see the times you live in, fear increases, and therefore it puts you into a survival mode, backpedal, instead of having the peace of God and stepping out in the confidence that he's given you. If you're going to really break through and live in your fullest potential, you're going to have to face areas of fear in your life. And you're going to have to face them at various layers and at various levels to stretch you and grow you to your greatest potential. That's why I'm so passionate about this subject. I created a resource called I Will Not Fear. It's a 28-day book and there is a, also an online teaching. You can get an audio and, and Kindle as well too. But it walks you through how to become more aware of how fear can become a limiting factor, but also how to break through. But we need to understand when it comes to spiritual blocks to the life of your heart, of you living healed, freed, transformed, and living alive from your heart, you're going to have to face the subject of fear. And fear causes us to do one of two things, and sometimes both. It causes us to get stressed out and stirred up where we have to anxiously fight something. Maybe it makes you very driven, intense. Maybe it makes you very controlling, where you step in and get your hands wrapped around stuff that really you need to just let go and take your peace. But it also causes a lot of avoidance, where we withdraw, we avoid, and we don't deal with the things that we need to deal with. And the problem is, is that when you live in this lifestyle over and over again, because fear wants to become a dominant motivator, where you keep making decisions based on the aspect of least resistance. So you take a step and you have, you have two choices and you go, hmm, which should I do? And you choose the one that seems easier. You keep doing that, keep doing that, keep doing that. You lose a sense of what's the best thing to do? What, what would I do if fear was not a motivator? What decision would I make? And now you begin to press into what's right for your journey, what's right to step into, what's best for your stretching, for your growth, for the possibility of what God has before you. But if we give in to fear and its motives, its, its motivating factor, then we'll keep making decisions, avoid, 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 avoid. Then 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years later, we're going, I got to deal with this. It seems so overwhelming because we've spent so long serving the same pathway. So then when we try to turn the tide, it feels like a tidal wave because we've built up a conditioned response to always give in to fear, follow the easier pathway, and we never stretch. It's really not a tidal wave. It's just a stacked up conditioning because most of the time you're facing one fear away. Let me say that again. Most of the time you are in a position of one facing fear away kind of position. In other words, you're that, that one moment where you go, enough is enough. I'm going to move into a new direction. I'm not going to let fear be the boss anymore of a lot of things changing and a lot of dominoes being pushed down. I know that was a game changer for me in my own life. 
And God's given us a provision in Scripture where we as believers don't have to be afraid. You're going to see perilous times increase. You're going to see circumstances in your world bring a heightened sense of fear. But over and over again, the promise to you is you don't have to be afraid. It doesn't have to be a part of your equation. In fact, Paul gave, the Apostle Paul gave a warning and, and an exhortation to Timothy. He said, God's not given you a spirit of fear, but of power of love and of a sound mind. Have you ever sat back and thought, man, those anxious feelings, those worries, could this be as a result of the spiritual assault of fear? Have you ever thought about fear being a spirit, being something that comes against you and fights you and wars against you in your thoughts? And Paul had to tell Timothy, a seasoned minister in the faith, he had to tell him, when you have that fear coming against you, it's not of God. It's a spirit, but it's not of God. It wants to give you thoughts. It wants to give you impressions. It wants to give you feelings. Don't associate those feelings with God. Don't assume that God's wanting to use that in some way. Nope, it's not of him. God is saying over and over again, do not be afraid, do not be afraid, do not be afraid, do not be afraid. Hundreds and hundreds of times, don't let fear be your motive. Don't let it be your dominant motivator. And so, have you ever thought of that anxiety or some of those panics that come against you or the worry that you spin in that you can't sleep at night? Or maybe some of your control issues where you just got yourself so wrapped around issues, you're so stressed out. Could it be because you've been listening to the voice of fear and it sounded like your own voice, so you just kind of went with it? It sounded like good reasoning, so you just went with it. But you need to stop, take a step back and go, I listen to fear and I serve it. It's like the, it's like the neighborhood bully. When he comes by, you listen to him. And what you really need to do is stand up to the bully and say, enough is enough, I'm not serving you, I'm not listening to you, I'm not falling for your games anymore. Because all fear is is smoke and mirrors, but it wants your attention. And so God's saying, I've not given you chronic fear. It doesn't come from me. It Tormenting fear does not come from me. So if you're feeling anxiety and all these things, or, or whatever you're feeling, stress, it's not coming from me. This is not something I've put on you. It's from the enemy. But here's what I've given you. Power, love, and a sound mind, or in some translations, is self-control. And isn't it interesting that these are the things that, that we often lack? Because what does power display? Boldness, confidence, steps of faith, stretching, stepping out into new territory, not letting fear be the dominant force. We're just going to trust and step out. What does love do? Perfect love casts out fear. It's that love of the Father displayed through Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit confirms that. The Holy Spirit empowers us with boldness. The Holy Spirit also, also comforts us. So it's going to be all right. It's okay. You're all right. You're all right. You don't have to be afraid. And then the beauty, and this is where the power of mental health comes in, of a sound mind or self-control. There's a self-domain of regulation, of soundness, of thinking, of balance, of emotional state, where you're able to have a healthy, grounded, day-to-day thought pattern in your life. I believe that chronic fear is one of the big military bullets that comes against you to keep you from living in the power of relational health, emotional health, spiritual health, mental health, all those areas, even physical health, are compromised by the work of fear. But we got to be honest about this and realize where it's had a work and where it's had an influence in our life. And so we often just kind of follow these thoughts, follow these trails without giving it a greater depth of thinking of, wait a second, who am I listening to here? Like when God came to Adam and said, who told you that? Jesus made this statement in John 14, 27. He said, peace I leave with you. And here's the thing that that is very clear here is he delineates, he makes a differentiation between peace of God and the peace of the world. He says, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Now, what's the peace the world gives? The, world, the peace the world gives is a false peace. It's a peace of making your circumstances feel okay, then you feel okay. Jesus is saying, no, 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 no. In this world, you're going to have trouble. Peace is not going to be the absence of trouble. It's not going to be the absence of stressful situations. It's going to be 
the kingdom of God within you, bringing you righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Spirit. That's the kind of peace that you have a peace inside that defies your circumstances. And so the command here is that I'm leaving you peace. And he said later in John 14, the Holy Spirit's going to help bring comfort. He's going to remind you of the words I've said, not the stuff the world is saying. Because the world will say peace, peace when there is no peace. They're going to call for peace. They're going to say we're going to get peace. And it's just not going to happen. And here's the exhortation. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. One of the greatest tips, one of the greatest pieces of advice I was given when I launched into transformational ministry and helping people in the way that I do now experience healing, freedom, and the full transformation that's potential in God is just don't be afraid, Mark. Don't be afraid to step out. Don't be afraid to try. Don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid of rejection. Don't be afraid. Don't let those things dominate your motives. You may feel it. You may be shaking in your boots at times, but don't let it own the narrative because I believe for many of you, your growth and your potential has been capped and limited because every time there's a step, fear contains you. Fear contains you. And what we don't realize is in our going back into comfort, whatever that means, we want to go back to maybe pleasure or escapism. And then we wonder why sometimes God isn't working the way we want because God lives in the domain of faith. So if you look at your life, look at the illustration of Jesus in the boat with the disciples. Jesus is walking on water and he invites Peter out to it. There's, There's a metaphor there in the spirit of God calling you out of the boat to walk on water because on the water is where he is. When you're on the boat, yes, yes, he's always with us. But if you want to really know what it's like to live with God in your fullest potential, get out on that water and walk out there because that's where it is. That's where the fun is. That's where the excitement is. But we have to get fear out of the way so we can see clearly. One of the reasons fear is a block to the heart is if fear is motivating you, you won't see the potential. So sometimes in my work with people, I have to ask them, what would happen if fear was not in the equation? Let's do the best we can to take fear out of the the situation, out of the matrix that you're looking at. What would that situation look like if there was zero fear? And we start from there and work our way back into what the decisions need to be. What would the mindsets be? Now, many believers, they'll just say, well, I'm just following God. I'm following his leading. I'm following my gut. I don't know. I didn't have a good feeling in my gut. And and I chuckle because that was one of my statements. And I got a few wins out of it. Like maybe I'd feel something in my gut and and, and, and I would would go, see, 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 that's God that's, that's leading me. The problem is, is that your gut can be wrong and your gut can be motivated by fear so easily. In fact, physiologically, That's where a lot of our anxiety and fears manifest is right here, either in our chest, where our cardiovascular system, our heart, you feel that anxiousness, that tension, that pressure, that stress right here, right? We'll feel it in our shoulders, our neck, the burdens we're carrying, right? On our shoulders, that's where stress appears because really it's showing us a picture of what we're carrying that we need not be carrying, right? It's showing here because our hearts are being infected by fear and, and, and the dread and the doom and gloom. And down here in our, in our innermost parts of our belly. In fact, the nervous, there's a whole nervous system that surrounds the stomach. It's called the enteric system, right? Then you have all these GI issues, gastrointestinal issues that we have, and, and, and all this stuff going on down here in our gut. And we follow those feelings. Oh, I don't have a good feeling about this. And it's like, wait a second. Should we always just listen to that without giving a greater litmus test to this? Because if we listen to that gut every time, we can begin to slip and slide into listening to fear all the time. So I have to make sure I'm leading my heart with truth and not just allowing the emotional sways because I could easily be swayed by fear. I can justify my fears. I can say, no, 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 this is good fear, right? I can rename it, call it concern, call it, no, this is being careful. I'm being cautious. I could rename it as wisdom. I can play all these kind of games and I'm allowing fear to become a motivator in my life. So the take-home question for you is, If fear was not in the equation of your thoughts and your perspective, what would your thinking look like and what kind of decisions would you make 
differently if fear wasn't in the equation. You say, Mark, this is easier said than done. Sure. Because this means nothing unless you take action. But the more you serve fear, the more you listen to fear, the more it will box you in. And you'll feel trapped and victimized by your circumstances. And God's not called you to live as a victim. He's called you to be an overcomer. That no matter what you face, there's a pathway of victory. And some of your steps of victory are going to come into experiencing the love of God, which is going to build your confidence. Some of it is going to be stepping up afraid anyway and stop waiting for things to change. And sometimes people say, I just follow the peace in my decisions. Oh, Lord, I just follow the peace. That's great. But what happens when the step is one that's really fearful that challenges you? You're going to follow the peace then? Because following the peace then is a false peace, and you'll just avoid and never take the step. And then you're wondering, why am I still stuck? I believe for many of you watching this, you are one facing fear step away from everything changing. And sometimes you have to get to a point of saying, if I continue to live this way in these patterns and I allow fear to be a motive, what's my life going to look like? And today I need to start learning to get comfortable with the uncomfortable of learning to step out and saying, you know what, I might feel anxious, I might feel worried, I'm spinning a little bit, but I'm letting this ground that I'm in fine-tune me into the overcoming person that God has called me to be. I believe in you. I believe in your potential, and God's not giving you fear. He's giving you power, love, and a sound mind. Let those, those, those aspects of God's nature and the Godhead of who he is, let those become your motivating factors. What would your life look like if power was motivating you? Love was motivating you, and soundness was motivating you. Whew. It'd be a game changer for many of you. If you want to go to the next level, I want to encourage you to get a copy of my book, I Will Not Fear. This is a 28-day process that has prayers and questions, very simple yet profound in helping you to break through the patterns of fear. I use my own story of breaking out of chronic anxiety and panic attacks and obsessive thinking that really came to steal, kill, and to destroy my life. These videos have been helpful for you. Please subscribe. Would you go to my website, markdehesus.com, subscribe to my email list. You'll get a free resource, and you'll stay in touch with any new writings, any new videos or podcast episodes that we come out with. We just want to be a blessing to your life. So thank you so much, and I look forward to providing materials that are going to be a blessing to your life.